Gigabyte B650 or Elite AX AM5 LGA1718. This is the motherboard we're going to be taking out of the box and running down through the specs for you. I'm going to give you my first impressions on it. Hopefully, by running down through the specs and telling you what this motherboard offers you, you have a little bit better idea if this is going to be right for your next AM5 gaming PC build or not. But without wasting all your time, let's flip you over here and we'll get this thing out of the box and run down through the specs. All right, guys, here we go. We've got the motherboard laying here inside its box. I do have to admit, it is a fairly heavy box compared to most AM, AMD motherboards. But I guess we'll see why it's so heavy when we get into it here. Go ahead and lift up the flap. What do we got? We got an anti-static bag. Inside of a little cardboard uh, thing here. Well, let's get it pulled up and out. You can set that to the side for right now, someplace. Okay, underneath of the hair, we do have your M.2 standoffs and your M.2 screws. Or no, there ain't no screws in that, but we do have an M.2 standoff. You got a little bit of Gigabyte G connector. I guess that's to hook up your front panels, make them into one block. That's pretty nice. We have your Wi-Fi antenna here. Because this motherboard does have uh, Wi-Fi on it. Um, there's your M.2 screw. We done looked at the standoff. Now we have the screw for it. Then we have a couple SATA cables. You want a couple SATA SSDs or maybe a hard drive in your system. That's nice that they include those yet. Uh, then you have your owner's manual for it as well. Probably don't tell you a whole lot about it. But it does. they do give you a piece of paper with a little bit of information on it. Okay, let's take the box and set it to the side. Okay, SATA cables, we really don't need to look at them. If you've been around computers for any length of time, you know what SATA cable looks like. M.2 screw and standoff. Um, for the last few years, them has been pretty, pretty prevalent or pretty, you know, well used. So you should know what them are. Your G connector, like I briefly explained, you plug your front header from your case into this and just makes them one block to plug them into the motherboard which makes it pretty easy that's a nice feature to have but the main thing i wanted to look at out of the accessories is this uh wi-fi antenna here there we go looks like we do have some plastic on it like i said it does uh it is bendable Yep, we do have a magnet back here for you can connect it if you want to connect it to the side of your computer or the back of your computer. Or you can bend it up like this and connect it on top of your computer. It should have your basic uh, screw on connections for your Wi-Fi. Yep, that's just your normal little connector that you usually get for connecting your Wi-Fi. Two little cables screwed on the back of your motherboard there. That's pretty well the accessories that you get with it. We'll put these back in the box here real quick and then we'll get the motherboard over here. All right, here's the motherboard inside of its anti-static bag. I'll get it pulled up. Uh, nothing else inside that little cardboard uh, filler there. Just a way to stop the motherboard from moving around inside the box. All right. Uh, inside of the anti-static bag comes up. All right, here we go. I can get the tape pulled off of it. Grab it here by the I.O. shield here. Pull it out of the box. And that thing is a beefy boy. It's definitely got a lot of heat sinks on it. That's definitely where the weight's coming from on it, I believe. Let's take a look at the back panel to start out with. See what kind of I.O. we got in the back. Back ports. We do have the Q flash button. The Q flash button to be able to update your BIOS without having to have a CPU memory installed, which is pretty nice. There's where your Wi Fi connections is. If you want to run internal graphics, there's like you got a display port and an HDMI 2.0 port, USB ports here. Looks like we got five USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports, then you got four. USB 2.0 and 1.1 ports. You have one USB Type-C port here in the back for your USB 3.2 Gen 2 support. 
the RJ45 port right here. That is good for 2.5 gigabits per second transfer rate. So pretty good speeds out of a built-in port. Got your three audio jacks sitting right here. The audio ports back here on the back. Then we're a 7.1 channel, which is a real link audio codec, high definition audio for them three ports right there. And you have your two USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type A ports in red right here, blow your RJ45 port. And this one right here, just another one of your regular blue USB ports right there that I missed. That's pretty well the back panel. It does have the built-in back shield on it, which is pretty nice. Okay, right here in the middle is your AM5 socket, which is gonna be for your CPU. And underneath your heat sinks here for your power delivery, we do have a 14 plus two plus one phase design for your VRM solution. So that should give you plenty of power for your overclocking abilities. Some of the other features of the motherboard, are right here's your four D, uh, DDR5 RAM slots. You will need DDR5 for AM5. This does support up to 6600 OC. It does support up to 128 gigabit of RAM, 32 gigabyte single DIMM capacity. It does run in dual channel, so you'll have to populate two of them to be able to get your max performance out of them. It don't have the, uh, the non-ECC memory, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, it does take the 288 pin, of course, DDR5. Uh, the CPU type is the Ryzen 7000 series, or for right now, still near, which they're supposed, to, this platform's supposed to support up to 2025. So we'll see how many actual CPUs you'll be able to fit into this. But of course, that's why that Q flash button comes into, comes into handy. You do have one PCI Express slot here by 16. It is only PCI 4.0, running a 16 lane, which a lot of your graphics cards can't really take advantage of anything faster than that. Even the 4090, I don't think is maxing the performance of a 4.0 slot yet. And to get anything better than the 4.0 slot on your 16 slot, you have to go up to the B6, B650E boards, which is the extreme boards. But I don't think it's going to be too big of a deal unless you plan on running the motherboard for four or five years. I don't think we'll really need that PCI 5.0 speed on your 16 slot. And then it does have two other 6x16 six slots down here in the bottom. Them do run at PCI 3.0. Okay, over here, which is kind of nice. They do have them right angled for you on this motherboard. We have the right angled side of ports if you want to run some older uh, hard drives or SSDs. And your USB 3.0 is right here at a right angle, which is pretty nice, depending on your case layout, of course. As far as M.2 slots go, we have one right here. that It, that it does run the PCI E 5.0 standards. You have two other ones underneath this big cover right here. These run PCI 4.0 slots. And don't do the 5.0 like that top one. So if you have a 5.0 SSD, you definitely want to use that top one, which is pretty standard on the B6, uh, B650 motherboards as I understand it. Right up here in the corner, you can tell this motherboard is made for overclocking. You have your standard eight pin CPU header and a four pin CPU header right up there. Let's say we have one, one CPU fan header, one water cooling CPU fan header, and you have one and three system fan headers, which one will be up here. Down here is gonna be your third fan header on this motherboard right here. Looks like we have two RGB headers up here for you. And down here we have an ARGB header for you for all them fancy lights that everybody has to have nowadays. There's your second ARGB header right there. There's your 24 pin connector. Another fan connector right there. Down here on the bottom corner, like normal, is gonna be your front head, the front panel header, where you hook up your uh, case connectors to it. And there's your CMOS battery, which, which looks like it'd be pretty easy to reset your CMOS with that. We do have one CMOS jumper, which is right here. You uh, short between these two pins right here, and it will clear your CMOS for you. You have a reset button here for your CMOS. So if you don't want to jump the pins, you can just push the button for your CMOS. We do have two USB 2 
connectors down here in the bottom. They hook up two different USB 2 devices. Then you got your front port audio right there. It is definitely a pretty sturdy made motherboard. It is very heavy. But of course, I think that's because of the heat sinks put on it. I think that's where most of the weight comes from. The back of it. Um, there ain't a whole lot back here to talk about. It looks like it, looked like it may have some trace lighting on it which Gigabyte's pretty well known to have that little bit of yellow trace lighting on it. And something I was interested in looking at, if you're gonna buy an aftermarket CPU cooler for your CPU, you will have to take, you will have to get one that takes advantage of this back plate to be able to, to swap out a back plate for any other cooler. You will have to remove this back plate and to do that, you will have to remove your socket itself. So I would definitely recommend if you're looking at a second marker or aftermarket heat sink for this, to make sure you get one that uses the standard back plate for your AM4 socket, AM4, AM5 socket. They say that they are interchangeable, so, but just make sure you get one that uses that standard back plate for the AM4, AM5 socket. It does have a pretty nice, uh, pretty nice look to it. It's all black with a little bit of gray accents. So they'd be pretty neutral for most builds. I think it'll go for just about any color build you really want to be going for, which motherboards nowadays is usually pretty, uh, pretty neutral like this in color. We do have the USB Type-C port here for your front header, if your case supports it. This is a full-size ATX motherboard. They say it does support Windows 10 and 11, 64-bit or 12 inches tall and 9.6 inches wide. It first came out on one October the 10th of 2022. So it is still a new product by the day of the filming of this video. This motherboard does support uh, Bluetooth 5.2. So it does have built-in Bluetooth into it along with the built-in Wi-Fi, which makes it pretty nice. I do believe it's more of a premium motherboard than the cheapest of the cheap. I think it pretty well is off for you about anything that you really need for the AM5 gaming system that you're going to be building. But all right, let me get this all put back together here in the box and uh, we'll get set up and we'll come up with a conclusion to the video for you. So we took it out of the box, we ran down through the specs to show you most of the main connectors on it. There is one thing I forgot to mention that I should have mentioned, that Wi-Fi on it is the latest standard. It is the Wi-Fi 6E standard, but it is backwards compatible with all other Wi-Fi. But what kind of price is on this motherboard? Well, let me flip you over here and we'll take a look at the price of it. The day of the filming is November the 20th of 2022. On Newegg here, because I like the filtering system. You buy for $229.99. Or you can do the $10 mail-in rebate cord if you like, which last couple times I filled one out. I never got mine back, so I don't mess with them. But if you do the $10 rebate, you can get it for $219.99. As you can see here, I got the 660 motherboards pulled up. And we have them sorted by the lowest price. This ain't the cheapest one out there. You do have the Gigabyte DS3H. You have the Azeroth Riptide. Um, the same motherboard, but it's a micro ATX motherboard. I was looking for a full size motherboard. You got the PG Lightning from Azeroth. You have Asus Prime Plus uh, MSI Pro. There's another uh, Asus Prime B650 uh, for $200. You got another one here. Another Azeroth motherboard going for $220. So it ain't exactly the cheapest motherboard. So why did I go with this motherboard? I went with this motherboard because a lot of them cheaper motherboards don't have or don't seem to have a buyer's flash button on them, which I think is going to be pretty important on the AM5 platform. This platform is supposed to be supported up to 2025, so there's going to be quite a few different CPUs that you can use with, with this motherboard, but you're going to have to update that BIOS. I think that flashback button or the be able to flash that BIOS without CPU and RAM is going to come in pretty handy. Look at a lot of them cheaper motherboards. They were micro ATX. I was looking for a full size ATX motherboard. A lot of them cheaper motherboards don't have the connectivity on the back panel of it or the back I.O. of it. Which to me, I run a lot of different stuff. 
Now I have a lot of different USB things and whatnot that he's plugged in. I don't want to run a bunch of dongles hanging around with multiple USB things plugged into. It's just nice to have them all in one set. This thing having the eight pin plus four pin for the CPU, that tells me that it's going to be more for overclocking. And also that 14 phase power delivery, 14 plus two plus one phase on the VRMs, it means it's going to be made for overclocking. Even though you don't plan on overclocking, that's going to help with the PBO that's built into AMD or the automatic overclocking. That's going to give you better performance out of your CPU just because it can get more power through the VRMs. So you'll be able to get a little bit better performance out of your CPU with this motherboard than you could a cheaper one that don't have as much VRMs or as much heat sinks or, you know, don't have that XP 4 pin connector for CPU power just by running PBO. Uh, I don't think I've ever had a B550 motherboard in the studio that was built quite this sturdily. This, I mean, it, it's a well-built motherboard. Of course, AMD is starting to take back the some of the shares in the CPU market. So I think they're starting to really focus more on putting the, putting the final touches on the AM4 motherboards or AM5 motherboards than what they used to, you know, because more people are adopting into it. And also with that, comes a little bit higher price tag. AMD said that we should have B660 motherboards starting around $125. I just showed you we don't have nothing down that low yet. They may come in the future, but you know, it kind of makes me question, you know, even if they get them down to 125, what else are they going to cut off of them? But I think this motherboard is going to fit my needs a little bit better than some of them cheaper ones did. That's why I went with the one I went with. Maybe you won't need so many IOs on the back of your motherboard. Maybe you don't think that buyer's flash button is going to be as important to you as what it is to me. So maybe you get away with a little bit cheaper motherboard than this. But I picked this one up because I think it fits my needs pretty well. There will be a build coming up with using this motherboard on the channel. I don't know if I'll do the CPU and RAM overclocking on this motherboard with the way the auto overclocking features is on it. I don't really know if uh, there's going to be much reason to do any kind of manual overclocking on these motherboards or not. Maybe we'll have to try it out and see. But there will be a link in the description below for Newegg. If you'd like to check this motherboard out, if you'd like to pick one up. There's some other links down there that may interest you. Don't forget the all that fun YouTube stuff when you're way down to that description box. You all have a good day, and I'll see you in the next video or live stream.